there's a lot of observers that I don't know why we have them. Uh, okay. Because uh, a lot of them, it's just sort of like, oh, this doesn't feel like an event, or or this is batched work, or something yeah. like that. And and the go-to has been to create an observer for it, and really don't need that. We could just I use. I with three observers right now. Uh, mutation. Mm -hmm. Resize. Mm -hmm. Intersection. Mm -hmm. I can also come up with three. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's done some work with CSS at some point uh, using uh, responsive stuff with media queries and such has kind of had the idea, huh, this media query stuff is OK. But what I really would like is mm -hmm. a way to style this element differently to how yeah. big this element is. Um, and then go on Twitter and say, hey, I've had a bright idea, or I'll file a bug about it. And I'm basically saying what I did, by the way. This is what I did <laughs> years ago. And people are like, yes. Yes. We know. Yeah. Many people have had this idea. The reason we can't just have um, element queries is you know, because you can end up with uh, a query which changes based on width. And as a result, it changes width. And you end up in Whee! an infinite loop. Bad idea, right? That seems pretty bad. So there's a web standard uh, called Resize Observer. And it's stable in Chrome. And it is, yeah, for an element, you just say, that element there, observe. Yeah. Let me, let me know when it changes size. All right. That's cool. And, um, and that, but so that means you can react. It's a JavaScript API, so you can react with JavaScript. Exactly. So, so, so we are back at the infinite loop problem. So I was reading your article, and you've got a section on, on, on that. Well, Do I? I uh, you've got yeah, it's a, little bit, a little bit of text on it. Changes will only be processed in the same frame if the resize element is deeper in the DOM tree than the shallowest element processed in the previous callback. That's a weird menu. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that's just words. That's just some words you like in an order. I, I, I think I explained it pretty concisely. Is that actually what I wrote? Yeah. Talk us through it. OK. I'm just saying it because I don't understand, so I'm taking okay, advantage so of it. An imagine you have an element that has children, as you know, is common, yep. and you call resizeobserver.observe on this element. On, yep. on, on, the, on the parent. Yeah, on the big. All right, all right, all right. That means whenever this element changes size, you will get a callback, and you can react to it. Cool. Excellent, yep. So now let's assume you also call another resource observer.observe on one of the children. OK, because as a result of the parent changing size, the children could change could size. Could change size, so, and right, you okay. want to be notified about both. So both resource observers would fire their callbacks, and you would get notified. Right. Let's assume, and the third thing, that in one of the children's callbacks, I change the parent's size. It's JavaScript. That's possible, right? I can just change anything in the gotcha. DOM. And it could even be done implicitly by changing the size of the child, which would potentially, push the, if, the, if it's the just text flow parent. or just append some text. Right. Okay. The parent could suddenly grow, and then technically, the outer, the bigger result observer from the outer element would have to fire again, and the smaller one probably as well. And then it could same happen again and again and again. And how we break this loop is with the rule that resource observers, all the resource observer will fire in the same frame before layout. And if right. you change within the same frame, they will also fire within the same frame unless the change has been made to an element that is at the same level or higher up in the DOM tree. So, so it's like in, in terms of how we talk about events capturing, it's yeah. sort of it's, it's in reverse that. bubbling. Yeah, capturing. So yeah. that's that's the uh, so that's the direction it goes. So it can only you can only have multiple invocations of your callbacks downwards of the tree. But if you if some of them that are high up in the tree would have to refire. That would be delayed until the next frame. So what you're saying is that the, the, the change is only processed in the same frame if the, the resized element is deeper in the DOM tree yeah. than the shallowest element processed in the previous callback. That's exactly what I'm saying. Right. And that's also exactly that what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense now. It's perfect. You should, you, should, you should have put that in the article like you did. I, was, I think at the end, I, uh, I think I remember writing this article, and there were lots of things changing. And so I got a bit annoyed because I was I think I was working on animation. And I, at the end, I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Just copy and paste that from the spec. Job done. Right. Well, yes, I like it. I think we should keep it in the browser. And I think other people <laughs> should implement it. That's, well, us. that's us doing advocacy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that that is like other people should <laughs> implement it, please. Um, we, didn't give that, we didn't give that a trendy weightless CSS name. Oh. Did I? Did I did is the, it um, uh, like Layout Enhancer? 
layout enhancer. That's, I think <laughs> I get a lot of emails about that to my spam folder. <laughs> this is a real cafe. It's a real cafe, yeah, of course. Where does matter for the podcast? We could be anywhere. It could be space. Space. <laughs> now, when we do the two minute segments, I want that as the noise. <laughs> you just going, space.